NASA's James Webb Telescope has shared a new image of Uranus. The image captures some of the faintest rings around the planet and the 27 moons within its orbit. Scientists believe the bright white light section of the planet could possibly be storm clouds. The seventh planet from the sun boasts the coldest temps in the solar system, reaching minus 195 degrees Celsius. Joining me now live to discuss is astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker. Brad, good to see you. What do these images tell us? Yeah, it's usually a surprise to people that um, Uranus has rings. In fact, all four of the outer planets, so Jupiter and Saturn, uh, have rings as well as Uranus and Neptune. But sometimes the rings are quite hard to see. And in fact, it's really these reflected ice crystals and dust um, that make them faint. But in the infrared colors, like what James Webb can see, uh, you can get a really awesome view of it. But also, as you said, what was quite exciting are seeing these two bright dots on the main body, which we believe to be cloud cloud systems. So on the right side of the image uh, of, the, of Uranus, you kind of have the bright poles. That's kind of that big white blob. Um, and that's actually because Uranus is tilted on its side. But the two smaller dots, we believe, are cloud formation in Uranus. Now, it's not a dramatic surprise that, that this happens. We know cloud systems exist on Jupiter and Saturn. We've seen it on Neptune as well. But it's nice to see it as well on Uranus because it's really telling us a lot about how these ice giants, as we call them, form, how they live, and what they may host in other systems. Uh, incredible pictures by the James Webb. I was reading, Brad, that these images have shown 11 of the rings uh, instead of the, the full 13, but do you think that James Webb will eventually be able to see all of the rings? Yeah, the, the two other rings are really faint and in the inner part. So if you actually do observe longer, if there is hope, you can see uh, two more of the sets of your rings, because that would be nice to complete it to the 13, because very few times have we seen all of them together. And it really was only the Voyager probes back in the 70s and 80s that as it went by these outer planets actually were able to spot some of these things. So we haven't had images like this in 30 odd years. You know, we think even though it's in our solar system, we should be able to see it, but it's really, really far away. To get detail on it is quite tricky. So the hope is, yes, that we can see those two other layers of rings. Okay, there you go. I feel like we talk about James Webb a lot, and as I say every time, I tell you what, that James Webb's done a fantastic job in space, so uh, we look forward to seeing what else it finds. Now, Brad, a black hole over 30 billion times the mass of our sun has been discovered. Tell us about it. Yeah, so a lot of these black holes sometimes, or galaxies far away, are found from a technique we call gravitational lensing. Uh, so you have a massive amount of galaxies, and that has obviously a lot of gravity in it. And gravity can bend light. So this is one of the um, uh, consequences, so to speak, of Einstein's relativity, that gravity bends light around it. So you're able to see either things really far away uh, or really big things also on that scales. But also as that light is bent around, it's kind of acting like a magnifying glass. So it brightens it to make us see it easier. But also we can measure the size of that object, whether it be physical scale uh, or in this case, mass. And so spotting this galaxy with a very large black hole, uh, it has now been determined to be about 33 billion times the mass of our sun. So, you know, we like really finding these really big black holes really far away. It tells us a lot about how big did these things get and how big did the galaxies around them get, uh, being about two and a half, 2.7 billion light years away. And then we can work out how long it's taken to get there and what may have been the, be the beginning things that that started from. So really seeing just the range of sizes and scales that you can get in the universe of these giant things. Yeah, absolutely. They look pretty big. Now, let's move on because the White House has released its plans for planetary defence. So what exactly does this mean and, and what are the key goals of the US in this space? Yeah, so this is a, a result of that successful DART mission, the double asteroid redirection test we saw late last year, when a probe crashed into an asteroid and deliberately altered its course. Now, so the question was, uh, A, would it work? And then B, what next? Uh, and so NASA and the White House have been working together to say, well, where are going to be our priorities for the next 10 years? And so they said the White House just a few days ago released what are the six things to focus on? Now, the first two relate to tracking and finding near-Earth objects, or NEOs, as we say. So the idea is, well, we need to be able to find smaller ones. We need to be able to find them further away and where they're going. 
and then better produce, well, not just where are their orbits, but what are they likely to hit or not hit. Um, other key aspects of developing ways of improving the technology to deflect these things, i.e., Dart works, let's build a bigger, better version potentially to see just how effective we can be. But also at the end is what you're seeing is both working with the international community. Right now, NASA has done a lot of this work into finding near Earth objects and asteroids and the hazardous ones saying, let's work with our overseas partners to broaden that work. Uh, and also doing simple things like emergency drills, believe it or not. We, they've done a few in the past, NASA, and it showed that if one were to ha hit near the Earth, we wouldn't be as prepared in terms of the agencies, the management, uh, and the practicalities of if an asteroid were to hit the Earth. So that needs to be part of the equation as well. So from finding them, knowing where they're going, trying to solve them, and limiting the damage is part of the plan for the next 10 years. Yeah, a busy 10 years ahead, no doubt. We're running out of time, but just quickly, repeating radio signals has led astronomers to find an Earth-sized exoplanet. Yeah, so last year, last week, we were talking about that um, TRAPPIST-1 system that had no atmosphere. Well, in this case, finding a lot of radio signals implies a lot of magnetism. Now, why this is important is a magnetic bubble around a planet actually protects it from radiation and things in space and makes it livable. That's why Earth is very habitable and Mars less so. And the fact that they found this on an Earth-like planet only 12 light years away, this is one of the handful of Earth-like planets closest to us shows that this is now another great place to look for wife and an inc a, a technique and a tool that we haven't really previously used, but a really big part of whether a planet's habitable or not. So I'm sure James Webb will be looking at it soon. Well, that busy James Webb as always. Brad, good to speak with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.